Okay, great. All right, thanks. And uh, Diana did, I think, such a such a great introduction. I'm going to go ahead and get going. Um, our uh, our purpose here tonight is to talk a little bit about the finances of the city of Monterey Park. Um, as Diana mentioned, the ways in which the city uh, receives dollars and uh, the services that the city provides, because there uh, there are things that the city takes care of versus the county versus the state. We're going to walk through some of those um, and some potential options for the city going forward. So with that. Um, one of the first things that we really try and articulate is that Monterey Park is a, what's called a full service city. There's about 500 cities in California, almost 188 here in LA County. Not every city provides the full uh, suite of services for, for a municipality. Many cities are, are what are called contract cities, meaning they contract out their uh, police department, uh, they contract with the local sheriff, uh, they contract out their fire department. They work with the county fire department. Um, they don't control uh, all of the services within their city, but Monterey Park is what's called a full service city, meaning there is a Monterey Park police department and a Monterey Park fire department. Other services that the city provides include uh, water services, streets and roads, other kinds of infrastructure like uh, sewer pipes and storm drains. Uh, trash collection, obviously. Um, there's a lot of day-to-day -day services that go into, you know, running our running our town um, that are provided by the city itself. Um, as part of that is a lot of infrastructure, and I mentioned streets and roads and, and sewer pipes to give folks kind of an idea about how much infrastructure the city has under its purview. There's about 119 miles of streets in the city of Monterey Park. There's three fire stations that have 62 employees uh, between them. There's a police station with 110 employees. The city has 14 parks uh, covering more than 100 acres. There's a swimming pool, there's a library. There's a lot of physical structures that the city has to maintain, keep in good working order and keep the city uh, moving forward well. Some of this infrastructure um, is actually in need of, of repair or modernization is one of the things we want to talk about tonight. Um, and these things I want to make clear are not not uh, special to Monterey Park. Um, you know, I mentioned the 88 cities in, in uh, LA, many cities across Southern California, um, you know, incorporated decades ago, even 100 years ago. Um, and as such, a lot of their infrastructure, a lot of their roads, a lot of their buildings may date to some of the uh, same time. Um, in Monterey Park, road, en road engineers recently rated the condition of nearly one third of the parks, uh, the Monterey Park streets and roads as just fair or poor, even very poor, meaning there's, uh, there's potholes that need repair. Um, there's other kinds of upgrades and maintenance that need to be done. Um, the city, of course, must comply with the Clean Water Act to maintain aging pipes, some of which may be several decades old, as I mentioned. Many local buildings, including fire stations, community centers, and the library and the parks are also in need of essential health and safety repairs. This has led in recent years to some tough decisions. You know, one visual example of this would be a, a, a park here um, that was in Monterey Park, a playground that was in need of some of these, uh, you know, health and safety maintenance and repairs. Um, unfortunately, it was too cost prohibitive to do so. Um, and that park, unfortunately, had to be removed. Um, keeping swimming pools uh, empty is, a, is another example of ways in which, um, you know, the, the city is, is, is not, not able to uh, maintain those services always. Um, there were some recent storms as well, um, you know, that led to leaky roofs and other things. These are just a few visual examples of the ways in which it can be challenging to maintain um, all of the, the buildings and the assets the city has within it. So we talked a little bit about some of the buildings and the roads and the things that are you know kind of physical in nature, um, but the city also in the in the crux of what it does is, is the people that serve uh, the community and the services that the city provides, and to give folks kind of a, a sense of scale among that, um, on average each year there's more than 4,300 calls to 911 in Monterey Park for medical emergencies, like car accidents and others. In 2021, there were more than uh, 1,400 emergency calls in Monterey Park related to homeless individuals, uh, and more than 1,100 calls for service uh, from uh, folks experiencing a, a mental health crisis. Last year, there were more than 220 robberies and burglaries in Monterey Park, and a five-year high of more than 255 car thefts. Now, again, these are um, these are demands that cities across LA and across Southern California are experiencing, um, but the uh, the demands are there nonetheless. And you can see with 4,911 calls a year, only 365 days in a year, you know, there's there's a lot of demand there, um, and it takes a lot of resources to maintain. 
Um, what is the public safety spending uh, you know, per capita per person in Monterey Park? Uh, it's pretty in line with neighboring cities uh, like Alhambra and Montebello, not as high as Pasadena, um, but kind of in the, in the middle of the pack there. And what is the city's budget? We've talked about the services that the city provides. Um, the the uh, budget for the current fiscal year in Monterey Park is $115 million. Um, but importantly, if you look at this pie chart, um, we're going to talk mostly tonight about this 41% that's in the green here, which is what's called the general fund budget. Um, and a lot of the services and a lot of the things you think about um, the city providing, namely um, police and fire and a lot of the streets and roads and so forth, are paid for out of the general fund. 60% of the dollars uh, spent in the city uh, go into dedicated funds. Some of that is to uh, things like uh, sewer and water, um, but uh, some of them are grants that are that are kind of spoken for. The dollars come in and they're and they're pre-spent, there's retirement obligations and other things. Those are things that are really pretty fixed. The general fund is where the city council um, has a lot of discretion and the community can have a lot of input on how the dollars are allocated. Um, so to things like public safety and some of the other things we mentioned, to the degree there are priorities that are shifting, there's some latitude for the council to, to allocate funds within that general fund budget. So currently, if you think just about that 41% in green, and then uh, within that 41% of the general fund, 58% of the 41% is spent on public safety, police, fire, emergency, medical, and so forth. 14% um, is on public works, um, which includes uh, sewers, pipes, storm drains, streets and roads, other kinds of capital improvements the city's making. And then 28% uh, is, is everything else that includes uh, parks and recreation, uh, building planning, um, the administration of the city, um, and, and, and various other kinds of services. Um, so what the city, uh, you know, while it's constrained its resources, it has some notable accomplishments, and these are these are really just a few. And as, uh, you know, the months go on towards the this budgeting year, um, you know, there will be a lot more detail on the things that the city has done. But, you know, some of the highlights from recent years is implementing a homeless plan that runs through December 2023. Uh, the city has worked extremely hard to minimize interruptions to essential city services uh, uh, and preserve the city's reserves, its, it's, it's sort of savings account, so to speak, during COVID-19. Uh, the city's worked to improve water quality, and it's uh, been helping businesses recover from COVID, um, while also trying to attract new ones and preventing uh, loss of tax revenue, which supports all of these services. The city has also been working hard to manage its budget. Um, it's slowed replacement of staffing losses from the financial crisis of 2008. Um, and that is another example of something that hits cities all across um, our state and, and likely the nation, but certainly in California, many cities have never recovered their staffing levels um, from before that financial crisis. Uh, and Monterey Park, it's no different, and it includes both full-time permanent staffers, but also part-time um, help in, in various city departments. The city implemented a pension bond that's going to save the city uh, $50 million in the coming year. So again, quite notable against a $115 million annual budget um, over the coming decades, it's going to save $50 million. Um, we discussed the playground that had been removed, and that's just a, one example of um, uh, you know, uh, tr of trying to be a good steward here. Um, and then the city's also invested in technology and cybersecurity, and um, cities counties, schools, local governments are increasing targets uh, for hackers and uh, ransomware and other things. So the cities uh, work to safeguard its systems uh, to try and prevent larger costs from, uh, from those kinds of losses. Um, I mentioned that the city is still recovering from the 2008 recession. Um, expenditures are, are higher than they were, but you'll notice that there are fewer employees now, um, fewer full-time employees, and the salaries and benefits have grown just marginally with the pace of uh, inflation and cost of living. Um, the city is, is really uh, providing uh, the same level of services, similar level of services than it did, um, but unfortunately with less people. And so how is the city funded? We talked a little bit about um, how the city spends its money. Um, how does the money come in? Well, 60% of the city's general fund revenues come from sales tax and property taxes. So sales taxes are the dollars that, um, you know, when you go buy a t-shirt in Monterey Park, um, various other things, there's a, there's a small percentage that is charged on that purchase that is the sales tax. Um, property taxes are paid by both uh, residents uh, as well as business owners, commercial properties. 
Um, and that actually makes up 42% of the general fund. It's a really significant portion. Um, oh, here, I have someone to let in the room, sorry. Um, Zoom alerts. Uh, <laughs> but one thing about property taxes is that they're, they're relatively uh, frozen. Um, if folks remember Proposition 13 from about 40 years ago, um, that was a statewide ballot measure. It capped property taxes and makes it so that they're only reassessed when those properties are sold. It means that amount of money grows very, very slowly, um, which is good for the landowners. Um, it makes it uh, so that, that that source of revenue, though, cannot grow with increased demands uh, or, uh, for services or any rising costs. Every city is also funded a little bit different. There are cities with uh, you know, really substantial tourism. Um, you know, maybe they're, they have a ski resort or, or a theme park. And so they get a lot of money from hotel taxes, what are called TOT taxes. Uh, Monterey Park, that's a very small sliver of, uh, of its dollars. Some cities have vastly more property tax than, uh, than they do sales tax. Um, but in Monterey Park, uh, one thing that's kind of important to know is the sales tax is the only one that, um, you know, has any potential uh, to kind of grow as, um, uh, as it, uh, the city has some latitude in what the sales tax is and also as, as, as costs increase. There is, however, uh, a really important fact that there's a limit on how high sales taxes can be, um, and that is 10.25% is the, uh, the state's uh, by law limit on how high a sales tax can, uh, can go. Currently, the sales tax uh, is 9.5% in Monterey Park. And again, comparing ourselves to other cities, that is lower than some of the neighboring cities. Um, it's the same as Rosemead. It's, it's lower than Alhambra or Montebello. And in fact, there are 50 cities in LA County that charge a higher rate uh, of sales tax than does Monterey Park. Um, and I think more importantly, and something I'm going to spend a little bit of time here uh, explaining, is that Monterey Park actually receives just a small fraction of these dollars. That nine and a half percent does not come back entirely to Monterey Park um, to fund the services that we talked about, police, fire, water, streets, roads, and others, parks. If you think about this nine and a half percent here on, on our dollar bill, so to speak, um, six percent of the nine and a half percent, so you know, close to two thirds of it goes to the state um, for the things the state legislature would like to spend money on. 2.5% of that goes to LA County um, and the County Board of Supervisors. There's a five member board of supervisors. Um, they allocate those funds. County provides slightly different services than does the city. Um, they do uh, public health, um, uh, uh, jails, the sheriff and so forth. Monterey Park, of course, has its own police department, um, but those dollars go to the county. Only 1% of the 9.5% uh, comes back to Monterey Park. And any of the dollars generated in Monterey Park that go to the state or the county, there's uh, no guarantee um, that those dollars will come back in, in equal part um, to Monterey Park. Um, and we'll walk a little bit about uh, through that. So um, the other thing that's important to note is that the any taxes that are imposed by the county of Los Angeles, they count against our cap in Monterey Park, right? So if the county raises a half cent sales tax, that will take Monterey Park's uh, uh, sales tax rate higher. It would take, you know, from the nine and a half to 10%, say. Um, it would count against the cap, but those dollars would not necessarily come back to Monterey Park. In fact, in the current projections for the current year, there have been a couple transportation taxes passed countywide, voters enacted it, uh, Measure R um, and then Measure M over the last 10 or 15 years. Each of those was a half a cent, so a full, a full cent. Um, those taxes are, are charged in every city in the county. Um, and in Monterey Park, uh, it's estimated that the city will generate $7 million from just those two measures in the coming year. Um, but it's also estimated that the city will only receive the benefit of 1.6 million of that 7 million. So essentially we send 7 million to the county, the county will return only 1.6 million. Um, also, it's notable that the county has eventually passed every revenue measure that they have put forward uh, over the last 20 years. Um, I mentioned the two transportation taxes. There was another for, for homeless services. Um, all, of those, uh, all of those measures uh, are uh, raised dollars in Monterey Park, count against the cap that the city has on um, how high its sales tax can go, generates dollars for services that benefit the residents of the county, but may not directly benefit the residents of Monterey Park. 
Um, and so again, to reiterate, I kind of already mentioned this, but the city only keeps a fraction of the sales taxes that are collected here. Um, and again, of the, of the over $7 million that measures R&M will generate uh, this year, the city will only see about 1.6 million in return. So with all of that considered, and as the city is considering its budget going forward and some of its demands, the city is exploring a possible uh, revenue measure here in Monterey Park. Um, it would be potentially a three quarter cent, uh, sales tax increase. It would be a ballot measure that would have to go to the voters. It's not been resolved yet whether it will, um, but some of, the, um, uh, some of the thought behind this is that it would preserve funding for services, including 911 response for police, fire, and paramedic, local drinking water, keeping public areas safe and clean, and really anything that the city's general fund um, pays for. Uh, but these are some of the priorities historically. How would that impact our dollar bill graphic? Well, recall of the nine and a half cents currently charged only uh, or percent, uh, only 1% comes back to Monterey Park. If such a measure um, were to go forward and approved by the voters, it would 100% uh, of those funds would stay in Monterey Park and the city council would have control over how those dollars are spent um, here locally. The state and the county share of uh, taxes generated in Monterey Park would remain unchanged. Um, but the city's share would grow, 100% of those dollars would stay here. Um, if it were to go forward, uh, such a measure uh, would bring the sales tax rate in Monterey Park equal to surrounding cities like Pasadena, Montebello, and Alhambra, and generate um, an estimated $6 million every year. Um, and another thing about sales taxes, we talked about hotel taxes. Hotel taxes are paid almost entirely by people who don't live in the city because by definition, they're coming to stay in a hotel, they're visiting town. Um, it's actually um, somewhat true of sales taxes as well. In a, the a financial analysis of sales taxes generated in Monterey Park show that 57% of the taxes currently collected in Monterey Park are actually paid by non-residents. There are people coming to work in Monterey Park, um, and shopping here or just coming purely to shop uh, and, and, and patron lo uh, local businesses, 57% of the dollars currently generated are paid by non-residents. And so what would uh, that kind of increase mean on some basic purchases? So uh, on a $12 purchase of, uh, of laundry detergent, currently uh, that uh, generates, there's about a dollar and 14 cents charged in tax on that. This increase, we take that to a dollar twenty-three, so a nine cent increase. That three quarters of a percent addition results in a nine cent increase. Uh, on a twenty-dollar purchase, uh, it's a fifteen cent increase, and on a little bit more expensive purchase uh, for sneakers, one hundred thirty dollars, it would be just under a dollar, a ninety-eight cent increase. Um, there are uh, uh, certain essential items that are exempt from sales tax by law. Most groceries. Uh, prescription medicines and many medical supplies, items bought with uh, CalFresh benefits and utilities, um, no additional taxes would be levied on these items. They would stay as is uh, untaxed by sales tax. And the city's also exploring how to make sure that um, you know, these dollars are spent in an accountable way um, and uh, any dollars generated by the prospective measure would be subject to annual independent audits expenditure reports that are available for public review. Um, and uh, once again, all funds must be used for Monterey Park services. They wouldn't go to the county or the state. So with that, um, that's our presentation for the evening, um, but we're more than happy to answer any questions from anyone uh, who would like.